I wish I could, Joe. I honestly, I seriously wish I could try your fish dish. I, I, I will take your... You have my pleasure. I love, yeah. I love lemon sole. Now... 240,000 screaming fans will descend on Croke Park over the weekend to see their idols One Direction play three sellout concerts. It's like modern day Beatlemania, isn't it? That's exactly it's what it is. It's been nothing well, since... Well, monkey mania. I think it's bigger than that. Mm. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll ask an expert very shortly. Let's talk to somebody who knows the band very, very well indeed. Now we're going to speak to Greg Horan. He is the brother, of course, of band member Niall. He joins us now live from Mullingar. Greg, much excitement down there, I'd expect. When was the last time you saw your brother? Good morning, guys. Uh, I saw him a few days ago. Um, just to say hello. He was busy. Um, yeah, there's much excitement around the town. There's much excitement around the country as well. Uh, the biggest concert in Niall's career, and all it looks like all the country's getting behind him. And it's a great time for family as well. It's a very proud moment for myself as his only sibling and brother, and my parents. Uh, this started off from the side of Ed Croke Park with his small interview of a song for a Sony, Sony uh, pr uh, producer, and then went on to three and a half years or four years on Croke, selling out Croke Park. You know, you're up, he's up there with the likes of uh, the Westlife boys and the U2. Like, they're major acts in the world, and it's just a proud honour for us to be, you know, celebrating this with him. You know, I, I don't know how he's feeling. I think, he, I think he's, he's going he's to gonna, he's gonna take this on, and he's going to smash it. He's going to absolutely brilliant. He's going to pull off the job, and the, hopefully, hopefully the country the country's going to, like I said, hopefully they're standing all behind him, and it's a big thing for him. Now, come here, Greg. There's a rumour that Simon Cowell has been floating around down in Mullingar. Is it true or not? Uh, I, haven't, I haven't heard anything now. I doubt it very much, to be honest. I, I don't actually know. Uh, I don't actually know. Um, but uh, if he is, he is, but I doubt it very much. I'd say he'd take his time off and he'd go to their, their concerts in Wembley. I think it'd be closer to home from. But if the man is in Ireland or Mullingar, the man's out in Mullingar. Our, my concentration now today is stand up, stand up in Croke Park and watch my brother walk out on stage and welcome the, welcome the Croke Park crowd like he's always dreamed of. And your uh, lovely uh, wife beside you there, Denise, will she be going as well? And more importantly, will his nephew Theodore be going? Yeah, we're all going. And where will you be watching from? I'm assuming tickets aren't an issue for you. So where will you be watching? Is there a special area backstage that you get to stay in? I think there just might be just uh, a room you could be put in just for just to relax for a while and then go to your seats. I'm not too sure as I don't know about Cro I don't know much about this Croke Park gig as <coughs> I said to myself I'm kind of blind to it all. I don't know what to expect. So I don't. Uh, it will be good. It will, will be. It will be good. I don't like people think we want special treatment. I don't, we won't, don't want special treatment. We're going to support our family member and take it all in as well. It's a big day for it's a big day for us as well. Like it's going to be very emotional for us to. Stand back and watch on stage. Niall do his thing. You know, I started out from very small little talent shows here at Mullingar, and it's ended up in the middle of Croke Park on a big, massive stage, selling out to over 240,000 people in three nights. Like, I, they, their dreams, we, their dreams I've had for Niall, I'm sure their dreams Niall has had all his life. And people, you know, people think it's a, it's a cheesy or it's a, it's a thing that people say, oh, he wanted to get into the music industry all his life. I can safely say, hand in my heart, Niall actually did. But he's in with a good bunch of lads. The four other lads are absolutely amazing to him. And he's met four new brothers. And it's proud to say that I'm a part of Niall's life as of the way he is. And if he was the one direction, I'd be even prouder. But it's a good day and it's a good time that my family are up there. You know, my, my son is able to go. And whether he's going to be, whether he's going to be out in the, in the audience because of the noise, we are going to get mere protection. But it's... He's going to be there with his uncle. With his uncle. You know, he's going to see his uncle. He won't have a clue of what's going on, but I will, and I know I will be emotional on today, and I am very proud of Niall, no matter what happens. I can see how proud you are of him. Now, we all think we know Niall, because we see him on stage, we see him in the videos, we've seen the movies, but you're his big brother. If you had to describe Niall to somebody who'd never met him before, how would you describe him? He's a very caring person. He's a very humble person. He's ha he has hit the limelight very quick and the, fa the fame game, if you want to say, very quick in his career. Like three and a half years into his career, he's organised to play in Croke Park. But this is, a, this, is, this is a day, this is a weekend for him now. And every time he meets a famous person, he's so, so st uh, starstruck. It's unbelievable. So he goes on. He's still proud of his Mullingar roots. He's great being back home. He loves being back home. 
He's still proud of his proud of his <laughs> from Ireland. He, um, I'm sure he'll wear his in ears tonight or, t- or Sunday night with it with the tricolor on them. <clears throat> um, he just, he's just, he's he's just a very humble person. He's a very kind-hearted person. The fans and all this mean something mean something major to him. Which famous person has he been most starstruck to meet, Greg? I think I think his hero Michael Bublé. I think Bublé would be the, up there with the number with the top spot. I think Michael Bublé. Well, listen, Greg, it has been lovely to talk to you because I know I can see how proud you are of him and it's really moving. It's lovely to see. And it's even lovelier to see his nephew, Theodore, dancing away there. He's clearly going to take to the yeah. stage as well. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Greg, Mark Hagney here. Just before we go, are you going to make the Derby County uh, QPR match on Saturday? <coughs> Unfortunately, Mark, I won't. Um, <laughs> uh, I think my, da- my dad is flying out tomorrow morning to see it. Um, I have given my good, I have to give my good well wishes to the players. I know some of them. At the end of the day, they're still my footballing heroes. Um, but uh, Niall, I'm sure would have loved to have gone, but unfortunately he can't. His schedule uh, takes it away from him. But um, no, I'm still I'm dar- Derby true and true, and I'm just pray to the Lord that we pull it off tomorrow night and we become Premiership club for a, for a few times. Uh, but no, Croke Park is calling the family and. It means the world that we're in Croke Park and it's a big thing for us. So. Well, good luck with that. I'm um, old enough to remember now. when Derby County were in the first division and Dave McCoy and uh, Franny Lee and when you, when you were lifting leads and managed by Brian Clough and all the rest of it. So it'll be lovely to see you back there. Oh, no, hopefully now. Brian Clough is a hero to all of us. Um, I've met Roy McFarland and all them, but uh, you know, they're heroes of myself and I. They wouldn't have been in our generation or our era, but they're heroes to us. Um, you know, the players we have now, we're doing good, but... Niles is a big fan. They're a big fan of Niles, and we're going to do. We hopefully we'll do it tomorrow, tomorrow evening, and we can celebrate with them a few, in a few weeks. Thanks, thanks, Theodore. I think Theodore should be on stage with the lads. He's it's made for it. He will be in a few weeks. Lovely God to see bless. you. Enjoy Bye. your weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Have a great one. Thanks, William. Bye. No, um, that's very nice to see you, and isn't it? You Sorry. Entertainment editor of the uh, Irish Daily Mail, Owen Murphy, joins us, and he's uh, going to tell us what we can expect from the One Direction concerts this weekend. Owen, you've probably seen them a couple of times already, have you? I think altogether, I've probably seen them. Eight or nine times, I would have been. So are you very excited to see them again? <laughs> I'm always excited to see them. Well done, to be nice honest. answer. Um, no, you see, I, I was lucky enough to be there from the start. I, I would have been backstage nearly every week when they were on the X Factor, and um, I kind of got to meet them then. So here's a question: Since then, from then to now, have they changed the lads, or have they still stayed? Of course, they've changed. Oh, they've become yeah. millionaire superstars. No, but ha- in the way that they <laughs> treat people and the way that they carry themselves, have they changed? No, them? no, they haven't. No. Isn't that nice? Not, and, and it's funny what, what um, Greg mentioned there about how humble Niall is. That is the one word I would have used to describe him. Every single time I meet him, he's exactly the same. He comes over, he gives you a big hug. Can you believe all this has happened? A big laugh about it. And, you know, you can look over his shoulder and there's a barrier with a thousand screaming girls who would just tear him apart if they could get their hands on him. Do they find that overwhelming sometimes? I mean, you know, we saw them in South America and the girls just screaming and rushing. It must be as a bunch of lads. I know young lads might think that's every guy's dream, but it must be quite overwhelming for I, them. I think at, okay, there, are, there, there gets moments where it just gets so ridiculously out of control and you talk about Beatlemania and I suspect mm-hmm. it's the only thing you could kind of compare to like in Lima or even back in Australia. I, like I remember talking to him, there was a time when they were looking out the window and they were looking at about six, seven hundred fans in a field and the big sign behind them was warning snakes in field <gasps> and they were literally shouting out the window for them to get out of the field they don't care and everybody wants a piece of them and I don't think Dublin is particularly ready for what is going to happen this weekend I mean there's going to be oh I don't know I think the preparations at Crow Park are, have been I'm talking about the locals oh really I, I genuinely don't think people are prepared for the scenes they're going to see it is going to be something it's not just the people going to the gig on the people will travel from all over totally. to get here just on the off chance that they'll yeah. see them in Grafton Street or get near are they going hotel to be, do we know what hotel they're in I know three hotels which they're supposed which this they're booked into. This is what they do into. now, don't they? They book into three. They've booked out the three floors in the Fitzwilliam. Okay. They've booked out uh, a couple of floors in the Powers Court Hotel. Okay. And then there's the K Club now. I believe which means they're not staying in any of those. Well, they're three. not staying in anything tonight or tomorrow. <laughs> or somewhere night. else at Derry. They're flying out tonight yeah. and tomorrow night. They're flying out. They have uh, commitments in the UK on. Saturday and Sunday morning. So they're doing the gig, then flying to the UK, coming back, back on again. Sunday, doing the gig, flying back yeah. again. God, they must be knackered. I would have thought. Oh, they're so. young and they're loaded. What am I saying? I'm feeling <laughs> sorry for them. They're grand. Have you, you ever? You can see why they burn. Why? 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 Burnout people, happens. Why exactly? Totally. And I mean, you you talk to 
it's, it's why Westlife are considered on such a high level by, by people in the industry to last 14 years. Mm. It is such a crazy schedule, but w one direction where they probably have it worse than maybe anyone else is because they're global. Okay. They're yeah. more global than Take That are. They're more global yeah, than Westlife ever were. Yeah. They've done it. Yeah. And I mean, like they're literally just back from South America and they didn't have their, like when they're in Europe, they have their, they have they their team. Their, they, well, they, ha they call it their kind of their comfort squad where they have the, you know, the three tour buses, the, the two private jets. They don't have that in, in South America. Now, granted, I'm sure they weren't exactly class, roughing it. <laughs> but, you know, the last thing you want when you're up, you know, when you're, you're, when you're, when you're literally traveling on the hoof the whole time is people coming around taking pictures of you on a plane when you're asleep. Yeah. Or, you know, to be hassled in customs. Or to, you know, it makes a huge difference when you do have these things. Come here, we're talking about them being humble and keeping their feet on the ground. What sort of rider do they have? What do they ask for? Well, this is what I love about, the, you know, it's the usual things. But for Niall in particular, Clonakilty sausages. Good man, Niall. Tea, Barry's tea. A good Barry's lad. And Haribo jellies. Oh, he's oh. crazy for the Haribo yeah. jellies. Yeah. So what about the rest of them? What did they all ask for? Again, very similar things. They're bringing their own things over with them. Like the, uh, Harry's big for pies. Pies? Pies, believe it or not. You see, they're, again, they're all just back from a tour. They just want that their little home comforts. bit English. of home. Yeah. I'd be amazed if Niall doesn't go to Supermax. Uh, he loves a Supermax. He is insane. I'd be amazed if they don't come up with a Supermax truck and give him a card. <laughs> 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 well, listen, I'm so thrilled to hear they're still as sound as they were when you first met them, which is quite saying something about their character mm. as men, because they're kind of becoming men they now, are. and the people who are around them who are keeping them safe. But it, again, it's kind of what Greg said. They're, they're very much a very tight team. They are like brothers. And I was talking to his mother, and she said, it's amazing how they all look out for each other. Yeah. They really, really she do. She must be thrilled to see him, because she hasn't <sighs> seen him since Christmas. Since Christmas, yeah, and I'd say she, it's going to be such an emotional night for both parents. I mean, you talk about being, um, if you were a parent, watching your, your child play in Crow Park in any sporting oh, event, be it a, it's a county fight. ground on. It's but to sell to out, walk out on it's it. Sell out, exactly. sell out three, nights. three nights of 240,000 people. It's just, it's the stuff of dreams. Well, it doesn't you, happen. You said it, it's you too. It, that's it is, yeah. It's you too. Westlife territory, yeah. that's as big as it gets. Yeah. Well, listen, we uh, yesterday announced that somebody is going to be there to witness this dream taking place. Liam Gleeson from Templemore and Tipperary was the lucky winner of our One Direction competition. He joins us on the line now, but before we chat to him, let's have a look at the video he sent us, which is why he won. You'll like this one. TV tree, please send me to Crow Park. You know I dance in the dark or in the dark. You know I scream at the boy saying how you do. You don't know, oh, oh, how much I want to go. Well, well done, Liam. John. Good morning, Liam. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Have you just stepped out from an English exam? Is that true? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> How'd you do? Exactly. Sorry? How, How did you do? It's okay to be back him up. I was happy. Okay. Did you get the questions you were looking for? Yeah. Okay. What, happy we, what were you expecting? Sylvia Platt, yeah. Just um, Sylvia Platt. the question on her the teams and the poetry. Okay. So you had it all covered, had you? Oh, I'm happy out. Well, listen, you're going to One Direction. And by the way, we have to say thank you to uh, Sasha Barry and her family because, of course, it's their tickets uh, that you're getting. And also, um, Pennies are giving us goodie bags as well, so we wanted to say, there's Sasha on screen. I don't know whether you can see it or thank not. Thank you to Pennies for the lovely and goodie bags from Sasha and her dad because they're huge, huge fans of One Direction, so very decent of them to hand over their tickets. So thank you to Pennies. Um, they get those. And Liam, you're off to One Direction. Woohoo! Woo! Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy. Woo! <laughs> What's your next exam? Sorry? What's the next exam? Uh, I have biology on Monday. Yeah. Oh, oh God. that's grand. Okay. Forget about that. Enjoy the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> that's, Cheers. That's, that's Liam Gleeson from uh, Temple Moor, is it? Yeah. Okay. That's the thing with One Direction. The fans aren't just. I thought it was all just twelve-year-old and thirteen-year-old girls. It's grown-up mammies. It's everyone. It's going to be tonight. You're probably going to see fifty-fifty. I'd imagine adult and over fourteen. Lots of people bring in their nieces. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I have never been plagued by so many people, and the people ringing me were a lot older than those that... There's a queue waiting here outside the I door. <laughs> Cheers, Owen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up, Joe Shannon will be... Joe Shannon will be...